T-minus one minute. T-minus fifty seconds. T-minus forty seconds. Minus thirty seconds. T minus twenty seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Zero. Own it, own it, own it, Kong. I own it. It did. Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. What is going on, you guys? Welcome to Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. And uh, my background looks kind of weird, so we're going to go ahead and fix that right quick. I'm going to go ahead and change these lights to blue because guess what? It is the SmackDown and Rampage after show with, of course, your ERC of WAT, one half of the only dominating tag team in women's wrestling talk history, the Salt Shakers. And of course, I am not alone. I have my co-host, Queen Steph Hardy. Stephanie, what is going on? We are back together on this Friday. I mean, what's happening? <laughs> yeah, we're here and it's Friday and I'm so happy to be back. Um, on a pretty chill Friday, you know, for the most part. So it's really good. I'm doing good. You're doing good. We're both looking good. So we're going to talk about SmackDown and Rampage together. Of, of definitely, of course. Um, I mean, it was so much that took place on this, uh, this wonderful Friday uh, for SmackDown. I mean, we are back late again because Rampage just decided that, you know what? We gave you guys some early shows, and that was that. Now we're going to go back to, to <laughs> late at night, getting out of here on the late shift. Uh, and, and we're the last people that you see before you close your eyes tonight, maybe. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe go watch somebody else. But right now, you're here chilling with us on this wonderful Friday. And, I mean, we're trying out some new things tonight. Um, TK pulled me to the side a little bit and said, you know what, since I don't want to try something out. And, yeah. Here we are. We're about to try some new things here tonight. Um, just want to say what's up to everybody in the chat. What's going on, Bobby? What's going on, Jalen? You're what's going on, Jamie? Happy Friday. Uh, what's up, hey, Demarcus? TGIF, thank God it's Friday. And of course, Joseph said we're in Baton Rouge for this SmackDown where a lot happened. Some left those questions for next week in Minneapolis, of course. And of course, my tag partner, Nikki, in the building. You already know how we do here. Um, Nikki's away on, you know, promotions. Um, but she will but definitely be back in the fresh. Um, so let's kind of go ahead and dive into SmackDown. Kind of going to start with the men first, and then we're going to leave the women last because we got to talk about this title of Lacey Evans qualifying for the Women's Money in the Bank. It's a big discussion that we really need to kind of dive into. So let's kind of just go ahead and get into the men first. So, of course, I'm going to go ahead and take this off here. Uh, so, of course, tonight on SmackDown, uh, opening up the show, basically we had Drew McIntyre and uh, Sheamus in a qualifying match for uh, to be a part of the Money in the Bank. Um, thoroughly, this match was really, really good, but it ended in a double countout. Well, double DQ, excuse me, because both of them decided that, well, you know what? Obviously, our hands are not enough. 
So let's use these chairs on each other. And that's exactly what they did. And they, it became a big, big brawl to the point where there was fighting outside and fighting in the crowd. And eventually there was some separation between the two. Um, so, I mean, kind of leaves you wondering like, well, what are they going to do now that they, it was a double disqualification because obviously they just, they didn't feel like they needed to finish this in the ring. They feel like they want to make this bigger than just the money in the bank. Uh, what did you think about this, this opening Stephanie with, with Seamus and uh, Drew McIntyre? I thought it was a little bit refreshing in the sense that it's familiar. Um, mm -hmm. It's familiar territory because they did kind of tear it up during the beginning of the Thunder. Well, not the beginning, but sort of like the midway point through the Thunderdome pandemic era um, when they started their rivalry because they were friends and they broke up and mm -hmm. then they wound up fighting and destroying each other. So right. I felt like this was a nice way to sort of freshen up us seeing them on SmackDown every week. Well, for the past three weeks weeks with the whole new day and um brutes thing um <laughs> it was nice for a change to see these two fight yet again but yet i was a little bit confused at the ending because of course this is a qualifying match and with mm -hmm. it being a qualifying match for money in the bank um you would think that there would be a more decisive finish but it wasn't like they're now having to possibly fight each other again and it's just kind of like well dang like what y'all could have you know not gotten this heated you know outside of the ring and just brought it back in the ring and fought but that's just not what they chose to do so now it's sort of up in limbo as to who's the first person to qualify for the men's money in the bank match but the match itself was still really good outside of the ending because these two can get together and have a fight and they just won't miss like ever it's just always heated you always got like the best of these beefy European men just destroying each other. So the match was great, but I just didn't necessarily like the ending. Yeah, I can definitely attest to that. I think that with uh, with this whole thing of the ending in a double DQ, I personally wasn't the, the biggest fan of it because I felt as if like if you're going to end in a double DQ, then you might as well just kind of have their next match or if they choose to have a rematch, um, make it a, a no disqualification, something like that. Uh, Joseph said that um, he was confused where chairs actually used. I thought the decision was double count out. I can see them doing it again next week, but falls count anywhere. Uh, that's possible. Right. Um, Bobby said maybe they would have a rematch, and Jamie said they're a good matchup together. They are. I mean, they are. They're they're phenomenal. <laughs> And Jamie also said, big, beefy European men. Uh, definitely that. They're definitely uh, meaty and beefy. <laughs> they definitely are. Um, so, yeah, as we kind of move on um, into the match for the, oh, Lord. I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily know what it is to say, but this right here, man, like, can we just really just, get into this um man ricochet versus gunther for the intercontinental championship uh finally happened tonight and by god i thought we was gonna have to have a funeral for ricochet and mm -hmm. his chest jesus uh yeah the opener it definitely was a banger um i mean Let's really just talk about this match in particular. I mean, did anybody, Stephanie, you included, in the comments think that Ricochet was going to retain his title tonight? I need answers. <laughs> Honestly, as much as I love Ricochet and respect <laughs> him as a talent, mm -hmm. I was very doubtful about him retaining his title because Gunther is just, he's just so imposing and he just looks like he could just push you with one finger. And you just fall over. <laughs> and honestly, I just felt like if Ricochet was going to possibly retain, it was going to take him 
doing a whole lot in order for him to retain. And he did show up in this match, but it just wasn't a match for Gunter's power and, of course, his striking abilities. And even his, um, and also in the midst of his, like, submission work that he was doing even outside of the ring when he had Ricochet upside down and hanging in the ropes and he was trying to break his right leg at one point like that was even like that was even more impressive to me it and intense. it was very intense so I was a little bit doubtful about Ricochet as much as I love him like and then it's just like his reign hasn't really been as substantial as I would have wanted it to have been so mm -hmm. sadly the writing was kind of on the wall so yeah it definitely was um and i mean of course we ended up having a new intercontinental champion gunther is now his holding this title for the very very first time and um i mean like wow i mean what is what is that you really can say in regards to to Gunther and and him holding this title, I mean, it's like, dang, Ricochet, you had a nice run, you really did. But as of right now, I mean, does Ricochet kind of get a rematch? Where did this where did this go after the fact? Uh, I'm looking at the comments. I saw a lot of y'all say Demarcus said nope, he had no faith in Ricochet at all whatsoever. Jamie said that she's still praying for Ricochet's soul and hopes that it comes back to his body. Nikki, right. of course, hell no, no faith at all. Jamie, hell no, nah, heck no, nah, no faith at all whatsoever. Uh, Joseph said that he was surprised Gunther got this title shot and won. I mean, outside of Drew Gulak, he beat up Jobber since he graduated to, <laughs> to SmackDown two months ago. Yeah, Ooh. that's that's true. Um, P. Nelson uh, said Ricochet is a traditional champ. He got some offense. I think Ricochet should go to NXT 2.0. And I like that you mentioned that because I know he's been, he's talked about actually wanting to go back down to NXT to face like your likes of Carmelo Hayes and so many others. Um, Cause you know, Ricochet used to hold the North American title. You know, I mean, he was a, a very, very, uh, amazing champion when he held that title. So I, I would love to see the matchup between Ricochet and Carmella because, I mean, they did have a little bit of back and forth on social media like a month or two ago. But we already know Ricochet can't really speak on the mic, so Carmella's going to thrash him anyway. <laughs> yeah, um, like, even, go ahead. Um, I don't mean to interrupt, but even if Ricochet were to go to NXT, I would, I would kill to see him go up against someone like a Wesley or mm -hmm. Nathan Frazier, because they're yeah. also evenly matched in terms of their high flying style. That oh. would be killer. That would be it absolutely is. killer. I and it would give me and Kat something to talk about. <laughs> you don't have to talk. You're trying to say I can not talk down on NXT? No, we do have stuff to talk about. I'm just saying it would give us something more to really like bite into in terms of that type mm -hmm. of match. Like we mm -hmm. do, like we talk, but I'm just saying, like that would give give like a lot more for us to bite mm -hmm. into on the NXT 2.0 after show. Hmm. I got you, I got you. Uh, Bobby said he was rooting for Walter. Uh, Walter was in NXT UK um, and NXT. This is Gupta now. But I get what you mean. We you know. Uh, Joseph said Ricochet was treated as a joke as a WD Intercontinental Champion. Jamie said that Ricochet was dressed nicely. He had a cute little gear on. Um, I think it was a new a new gear. I, I hate that the fact that he may have dressed nicely to lose, but here we are. <laughs> uh, Bobby said he does like Ricochet as well. Joseph said that Gunther is really impressing important people backstage to be given this WWE Intercontinental Championship. The joke has been NXT grads usually suck, but not Gunther. I can agree. Um, Ricochet did good things on NXT. He did. I think Ricochet was amazing on NXT. I think he he fit the mold of that black and gold brand at the time that he was there. I think even with he him coming up to the main roster was kind of weird with him coming up with Aleister Black. Although uh, Aleister Black, um, Ricochet and Mustafa Ali did amazing things when they were kind of all working together in a tag. Um, I, I thought that ricochet came up at a weird time and since then he's kind of it's kind of been a little difficult of him trying to find his place um so i mean 
If he chooses to go back down to NXT, I think it'd be great. I mean, Apollo Cruz is back down to NXT. I think Commander Ortiz, Ortiz is down there, back there, back down there too. So, I mean, I think it'd be great to, if Ricochet chooses to take time from the main roster and kind of go down to NXT and wrestle some of the new talent that's there um, that has some similarities in, inside of the ring. Um, and, and maybe build something, build something there, you know, let, let people remember that he's Ricochet, you know, he's, he, he does amazing things in the ring. So I think that'd be, um, great. Um, he just need me on the mic. Hello. Um, Sam, I don't think nobody would want you to speak for them. You can't even defend yourself. <laughs> so. <laughs> what in the they- world? <laughs> Jamie said, up in here. <laughs> "Oh, we just getting started." Uh, <laughs> yeah. Jamie said, "We we'll love a matchup with Ricochet and Carmelo or Wesley. I think that'd be great." And um, Gunther is going to be a tough champ. He is a beast. I, I hope he. I hope Gunther's continue to be built as a dominating champion. I really do. Um, I, I definitely hope so. But at this time. He may be champion right now, but I hope he really I hope with him being champion, he actually have some interesting competitors to defend his title against. I will say that. So me too. Or he know. might have a stranglehold on that title the way he had a stranglehold on the NXT UK title. Mm. And you know what? Honestly, I didn't even mind the fact that he did because he was actually defending his title. We actually knew who the who was holding the champion. We knew that he was going to come out there and continue to stay relevant, unlike others, but we won't get into it because um, we definitely will get into it later on tonight in our main event for SmackDown. Um, right. Bobby said he'd like to see Ricochet and Grayson Wilder. I think Grayson Wilder is, is a, a amazing wrestler, honestly. Like, he has a, a yeah, he's you know, he is he's, he's a he's an a hole, you know. But he he does he he does really really well on the mic, and he's a, a great wrestler as well. So I think him I think Ricochet can really go down the NXT and create some new magic with a lot of these newer uh, stars who are probably coming up may not fall into his footsteps, but are amazing, talented, and actually holding it down in NXT two point you know. Um, as we move forward to something that I really thought was like the end of it all at Hell in the Cell, but obviously they want us to continue until we at least get the last laugh. And um, I'm sick of it. <laughs> Why do you guys keep doing this to us? Why do we keep getting Mad Cat Moss and Happy Corbin? Like, what? Like, wasn't Hell in the Cell enough? There's nothing left, okay? I have nothing. I have no more laughs. I have nothing left in me. Why do we keep getting this match? Why do we keep getting anything with these two? Jesus, he lost. Corbin lost, okay? Let's pack it up and move on and let's do something else. What do we, what, what else can you do? There's nothing else you can do. Uh, yeah, when I it's gonna happen, Stephanie. But how do you think this is gonna end next week? <laughs> well, honestly, I know when they showed the clips of uh, Mad Cat Moss winning at Hell in a Cell, which was a great and well earned victory on his part. Yeah. Um, and then they showed Happy Corbin getting stretchered out or whatever. I mean, I was like, well, this feels like that felt like the end on Sunday. But yeah. then it's just like when they announced this last last laugh match, mm-hmm. it's just kind of like, what's the point of this if this you know, why keep it going? You know, why can't you just let them do something different yeah. um, at this point? Because it's like Madcap has now, you know, detached himself from Happy Corbin and now he's standing on his own two feet. Happy Corbin mm-hmm. was stretchered out. So let him heal up and actually do something different outside of the whole Madcap Moss thing. Because now we've been seeing the seeds planted for them to break up since like before WrestleMania and even after that. And it is now June and we got to wrap this up. Now we're still here. And it's just like, there are certain things that is good to run back. Like Cody and Seth, Mm -hmm. this however is is not that type of thing. This is not that type of moment. So just stop being lazy and don't, you know, and just do something 
just different with these two. I feel like they've earned something different because they've done, I feel like they've done all that they could do with this mm-hmm. feud at this point. But, you know, they're going to fight next week and it's just like, okay. I mean, you know, you would think, but at this time, we really don't know. Um, Let's see. So I'm looking in the comments. Joseph said the final encounter, Mad Cow Moss versus Happy Corbin. Thought No Holds Bar would be the ending. I agree with Santana. I'm sick of it. Yeah, I'm tired of it. Uh, Bobby said he wants something new for Mad Cat Mox. Also, don't forget, okay, you guys, I know we can't see it here, but you guys can definitely see it on Twitch. Uh, we do have a poll going on as of right now, which is, as of today, breaking news. Uh, we're going to kind of dissect a little bit before we kind of get into this last men's match. But earlier today, we all been having our speculation about where Paige is, when is Paige going to come back on our TV screen, so on and so forth. As of right now, Paige has let it be known that her last day with WWE would be July the 7th. And it's a sad day for those who are who who are fans of Paige. Um, more so just the fact that, you know, she had a great run in WWE. She's still so she's still young. She has a I feel like she does have a lot left in her tank where she can just go wherever, um, wherever she pleases. She has the credibility, she has the in-ring ability. At the end of the day, WWE is still her, her house. I don't care whoever tries to come in and try to take it or say it. But at the end of the day, WWE is still her house. That inside of that ring is still her house. And I feel like wherever she chooses to go, she's definitely going to make it her house. Um, so we do have a poll up that does say, where would you like to see Paige next? Um, the choices are Impact, NWA, AEW, and other. So whatever else you choose to, you know, put as a selection um you can pretty much choose your answer and go from there um but you have you know until the end of the show uh, which i think maybe the poll has ended now um but you definitely have a chance to go and you know figure out who you would like to wherever you would like page to go um and we'll definitely break down the poll once we kind of get more towards into the women uh matches for the night um and yes look at those graphics um they're nice. <laughs> uh, Happy Corbin should be resting in the hospital. Ooh, that's spicy right there. <laughs> Joseph said, "Don't be surprised if a stip gets uh, if stipulation gets added where this is a money in the bank qualifying match. We are three weeks out, three weeks out, and all we know are the women's title matches. Plus, Lacey is the first SmackDown representative in the women's money in the bank ladder match, and we're definitely going to get into that pretty soon. Uh, yes, Sam, this is still her house with Paige. Um, also, I think due to the t- due to time contracts or contrast." Mike Max Dupree saying now next week in Minneapolis, we will meet the first client or clients of maximum male models. Um, but well, I wonder who they're going to be. Do you have an idea who it's going to be, Stephanie? Who would yeah, you, who kinda, would you like I don't see? know. Who would you like to see in it? I don't know. I just hope they're gorgeous, whoever they are. I just hope they're really <laughs> gorgeous. I mean, I would hope so too, but I don't want to be disappointed now. <laughs> I don't want to figure our hopes up and then it's like, ah, okay. So this is what we got. I hope our truth is in it. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt he'll be in it. I, I doubt know, that. I doubt can you that very much. Our truth being a part of the maximum male models. <laughs> I, I would love it. it. I would absolutely love it, honestly. Uh Wow, you are really on these people, uh, Nelson. Uh, now I can take Matt Kemba seriously after removing suspended and lows. Yeah, I mean, he's just like a generic number five uh, creative character wrestler now, in my opinion. But dang, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph said in, in talks of pay, surprise, Soraya set out the last two years of her contract without doing anything. She gave, she gave WE in one form or another 11 years of her life. She's the only Soleil wrestler at 23 to have their life story told. That is true. Uh, Bobby Absolutely said true. in regards to who the male, who the client or clients could be, um, he said maybe Mansoor. Uh, Sammy thinks Mace and Aaliyah. He said what he said as if that matters. Um, and then Joseph thinks maybe pre- pretty deadly. 
Um, it's so many people that you really can like think of to be a part of this. Um, I don't know, but I, I, we're definitely going to find out exactly who is going to be. What we do know is that we have a championship opportunity that is going to be happening next week. So in regards to, of course, um, this match right here. Um, so we knew what the stipulation was, Riddle versus Sami Zayn. If Sami wins, Riddle is barred from SmackDown, meaning that he can no longer come to SmackDown. He is banned. Dunzo, Finito, that's it. No mas. <laughs> um, if Riddle wins, he faces Roman Reigns for the Undisputed Championship. Um, so let's let's just kind of kind of talk about that for a little bit. As you know, we haven't seen Roman Reigns in a in a while now. You know, in a in a in a minute since the Usos won those uh, Raw tag teams. One, you know, the Undisputed uh, tag team match against RK Bro. We haven't really seen Roman since then. In my eyes, that I can remember, I, I haven't seen him. Um, I know he's been kind of taken off on a lot of off a lot of the pay per views, such as Hell in a Cell, and now I think Money in the Bank. He's been taken off. Um, I'm not sure about SummerSlam, but I know right now we're on the road to Money in the Bank. Um, man, I mean, I just want to know why. Um, well, some people think that because, you know, he's won the title, so now he's taking Brock Lesnar's schedule where it's like, you know what, I'm the champion now, I, I've beaten everybody, I don't really have any competitors, I'm just going to lay low and chill and hang out and just, you know, not defend these titles that, you know, that WWE put on me because they, they, I'm the, I'm the big dog, well, not the big dog, I'm the tribal chief. I'm the head of the table. I don't have to defend my titles anymore because I don't. I've I've pinned or smashed them, dumped everybody out. So I don't. I don't have nothing else to prove because I'm your tribal chief. Acknowledge I me. Mean, Bad and rude. Be, Acknowledge me. I mean that may be true, but I just miss seeing his face, and I just feel like I just want to know why. That's so sad, Stephanie. But this is what happened when you put two belts on somebody who doesn't want to show up to work no more, who doesn't want to defend their titles anymore. This is what happens when WWE put titles, two belts, on someone who doesn't give a damn about y'all feelings, doesn't care about y'all want to see him. Because guess what? When he come out next week, everybody's going to forget and they're going to not be mad anymore at the fact that he hasn't been here. But me? Oh, I'm going to turn up. Best believe I'm gonna turn up. It's been a very, very long time since I've like really dug into Roman Reigns' ass, and y'all know that for a fact. It's been a very, very long time since I've done that. So mm -hmm. next week, oh, it's gonna be a happy day for me. It is. Yeah, it, yeah, and it it might really be a happy day for you because, yeah. I won't be here to defend him. Oh, wow. It's me by myself. Yeah, I'll be in New York. Oh, yeah, you will. Stephanie's going to New York for Black Fest. I know that's right. Yay, Black Wrestle Fest. I know. You Yay. Here we are. I Oh, my God. This is going to be. I'm going to make it for you, Stephanie. I'm going to do it just for you because you're not going to be here. I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to. But I'll be back. You'll be back, but at the but afterwards, <laughs> I not already I not already pinned them, smashed them, stacked them, and tossed them out to the trash, shredded it. He he's no more. <laughs> Don't make me come get you, saying. <laughs> Don't make me come get you. Don't let's make get, me do it. <laughs> let's get into these comments about before we kind of just say we know who won. Of course, we do know that Riddle. Is the one who did defeat Sami Zayn um, tonight, um, and even after the fact, the Usos got involved. Sami tried to hit an RKO on Riddle, but it, it it backfired. And I mean, the Usos came out immediately, like an ambush on Riddle, but somehow somehow Riddle found those Kendo sticks and he beat the hell out of the Usos. 
Like, went to we were so bad to take it out the ring. So now it's like, wow. Now we have an undisputed WWE Universal Championship match taking place next week. Um, what do you guys think? Do you think that Riddle is going to take this title off of Roman right now? Or do you think there's going to be some type of interference? Is there going to be some type of disruption? Or, or will we see the return of Randy Orton? Will we see Shinsuke come back? Will we see some people who who Reigns and the Usos and Bloodline have like completely taken off of TV? Are we going to see something happen next week that is going to be like, oh my goodness, what the hell is going on? Let me I don't know. know. It's kind of hard to say because it's like Matt Riddle has been on a tear lately. He really <laughs> and has. he's just, he's, he's not just been, he, like, he's just been popping off lately, you know, as a one man wrecking crew mm -hmm. against the Usos or whatever, even tonight and even with Sami Zayn, you know, and they fought in a good match. But of course, you know, Sami going to try to be sneaky or whatever and prove himself, you know, in front of Paul Heyman, who was on commentary, which was refreshing. Um, because he used to be on commentary for SmackDown back in the day. Um, mm -hmm. for those who remember, so it was refreshing to hear him do that again. But at the same time, he was watching, he was getting real frustrated with Sammy, you know, in towards the end of the match. And then Riddle won, and he was looking like, bro, I'm mad. And then Riddle basically, you know, ran through the Usos and everything. <laughs> so I feel like Riddle is gonna put a put up a really good fight next week. But I yeah. just feel like ultimately Roman is just going to like be underhanded like he always is. And then, you know, utilize all these X factors to try to stop him and everything. So mm -hmm. I feel like Riddle will be champion one day, but just mm -hmm. not this day. Hmm. Well, I guess you don't see clearly. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. So we get into some of the comments that you guys have been talking about. Joseph said Roman hasn't done a real singles match since Vince gave him the moniker hashtag Roman two belts at Mania. He did that stupid six man at Backlash, which I really thought was dumb, too. I think a lot of people thought that as well. Um, keep Nelson said, keep up the great stuff. I got to wake up to do a meeting. Great. Uh, thank you so much for joining thank us. You. Nelson. Um, make sure, you know, you come in, you subscribe and follow the Twitch for Women's Wrestling Talk. For those who are new that's coming in, I guess I can reintroduce myself. You may be looking at this name like, what the hell is that and how do you pronounce it? Um, I'm Dreon Santana. I am the editor-in-chief of Women's Wrestling Talk. And also, I host on the side. And of course, this is Stephanie Hardy, my co-host. We're here for the SmackDown and Rampage after show. We're about to get into Rampage really soon, so make sure you stay tuned for that. We're about to finish up SmackDown. We're really about to dive into the women right quick. Um, before we head over to Rampage, and um, I'm going to let Stephanie handle Rampage because I, I think I like when we split up the show, as you know. I think, it's, I think it's fun. It allows us to, you know, we have to hear Stephanie talk more instead of me because I know y'all get tired of hearing my voice. <laughs> Sometimes I think they might get tired of hearing my voice because I feel like sometimes I'll be long winded. I think we all long winded, but it's okay because guess what? They still here looking at us, <laughs> but I definitely enjoy it. Uh, so Joseph said, 651 days. You are still counting. I I forgot count. I I'm gonna let you know right now. I stopped counting a long time ago. Just be honest. Uh, 651 days reign of Roman as a WWE Universal Champion and about 55 as WWE Champion is on the line next week if the match happens. That is true. Jamie says she also misses Roman's face too. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Oh, I miss his face. Just bring him back, Lord, so we can look at the gorgeousness of what the Lord made. Mm, that's interesting. Um, Bobby, <laughs> Bobby says, not a fan of Roman Reigns. Neither am I. No legend of right now. I'm not. Um, everybody, everybody who's here knows that I, I don't whatever um joseph said wish this was at money in the bank yeah but since they don't have roman advertised for money in the bank i mean 
I feel I will. I mean, I, I would think this match will happen, but it probably it may go to Money in the Bank. I mean, as of right now, WWE doesn't really have anyone there to kind of keep people tuned in or interested. So bring Roman back, I guess, to keep y'all happy. I don't know. Uh, Joseph says Santana will be in seventh heaven if this if the match happens, cause that's BS that Roman went this long without the either bill. Yeah, it's it's stupid, but hey, the fans wanted this, and you got what you got. So, and now you get what you get. No Roman. Uh, Riddle is going to win next week. That's what Bobby says. Well, the market said Riddle is going to get smashed. He's going to see Riddle get smashed. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I don't think he's gonna get smashed that bad because Riddle can actually wrestle. No, oh one. yes, he really can. He definitely can wrestle. Um, mm-hmm. but that honestly is it for the for the men, you guys. Um, next week I'll be here to discuss the aftermath of SmackDown and Rampage, but let's kind of dive into the women as of right now. As earlier, a little bit a few minutes ago, we were talking about Paige and her you know, lending her final days in WWE on July the 7th. And we put up a poll to figure out where you guys think she will go next. And it seems like to me, the winner of where Paige, where you guys would like to see Paige next is Impact Wrestling. Um, We had some people vote for NWA. Nobody voted for AEW, thank God. And then obviously you guys didn't know exactly where you guys would want to see her at next. But Hey, it's cool. It's fine. We we love it here. We will. I would love to have her back over. It. I would love to have Paige and Impact. Who like Paige and Impact? I think would be phenomenal. Not gonna even gonna lie. Yeah, it would be great. Um, I do have something to say in to- in terms of speaking about Paige. Mm-hmm. Um, when I got the news about her retirement, well, not her retirement, but just her um, leaving WWE next month, I was um, a little bit saddened by it. Um, but she hadn't really done as much, so it was just, mm-hmm. I mean, I guess she just felt like this. it was just, this is what's best for her um, in the long run. And she has nothing to be ashamed of because she because she was so passionate about wrestling from the beginning. Like her mom carried her in her womb when her mom was wrestling. Like mm-hmm. and her family was just so legit about wrestling. And I just love seeing that. Of course, you know, they had that documentary which was turned into an actual movie, you know, telling her story. And with her to be as young as she is she's just very accomplished like she was the youngest divas champion and then when she won a divas title she was a double champion because she was the first ever nxt women's champion so there is just so much that she has already done you know even before the women's evolution was even a thing like she was a part of the prerequisite and even though um there was a lot of other stuff that got caught up with her it's just the fact that she didn't let that deter her from doing her job, even though she might not have been able to wrestle full time. Like she was a manager. She was a general manager on SmackDown Live. Like she was the manager of Absolution with Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. So and and even when she, and it's just like she made the best out of every situation that she was in. And she did, unfortunately, have to retire due to injury. But. Her legacy will always be intact and we'll always, you know, love her. And I'm pretty sure any wrestling promotion will welcome her with open arms as long as she is absolutely healthy. Because I was, you know, betting on and sort of manifesting her making a comeback Mm -hmm. um, with WWE. But even if it's not with WWE, she'll still be okay wherever she decides to go. And I'm sad to see her go, but at the same time, you just got to do what's best for you. And as long as she's healthy and happy, that's all that matters. But I'm just really grateful for seeing her journey up until this point. Yeah, I definitely agree. I definitely have to agree. Make sure you guys, there's a new poll that is up because about to get into Lacey Evans qualifying for the Money in the Bank match. Are you guys happy to see her qualify? Click that yes or no, and then we'll let you know, like... What you guys think afterwards? We're kind of just diving and discuss, but let's go into these comments a little bit in regards to us talking about Paige. Um, I voted for Paige going to Impact Wrestling. Um, okay. 
Joseph said that I voted for her to go to Impact Wrestling. She would be a great asset for their women's that's division. Nice. I mean, I think that's also with Paige. I think if Paige was to join um, Impact Wrestling, I think that it would be great. Paige is a great character. She can talk on the mic. She's a phenomenal wrestler. She's a former champion, you know? And, and, and I think that like I said earlier, I feel like with Paige, she has so much under her belt. Like, she's still so young, and I know that the injuries kind of, like, cut it short just a little bit. But I would love to see Paige back on my TV screen wrestling again. Like, I think, like, if Paige was to wrestle again, I think it would be great. I think it would be awesome. Like, it really would. Um, Jamie said, AEW needs to think about how they book women before. I suggest she, in parentheses, Paige goes there. Um, that part true uh joseph said tony Khan wouldn't know what to do with her great skills he needs to think about how he books his division before soraya would even entertain an offer to go there that is true that that's part. right another poll is up you guys um that's that's right and before we kind of dive into that um let's let's talk about it um let's let's pretty much just dive into what we have next which is, of course, we finally, 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 finally got Lacey Evans to get back into the ring after a whole year, you know, of her absence because she was pregnant. She had a baby, you know, and now, uh, you know, we had a lot of a different vignettes about, you know, her wanting to, um, if the poll in it, just go ahead and just come in the chat, yes or no. Uh, but, um, I mean, uh, it's great, but it's kind of sad because she she had this qualifying match against Zia Lee, and I mean Zia Lee when she came to the main roster, I mean her her whole protector um, character and everything. I thought it was amazing fit for her, um, but it's just kind of like has W dropped the ball with with Zia Lee. Um, since her coming up to the main roster, I mean, she got featured a little bit, but it seems as if like Zia Lee is like a heel now, and there's there's really nothing exciting for her. I'm not the biggest Lacey Evans fan either, um, so to see her qualify for the Money in the Bank, I mean, I knew it was obvious that it was going to happen, but doesn't bring that much happiness to me. Um, what about you, Stephanie? It doesn't bring that much happiness to me for a number of reasons. Um, mm -hmm. Even though I do admire the fact that Lacey Evans has gone through this rebrand and I do, and I did like her um, promo that she had backstage with Kayla, mm -hmm. where she was talking about, you know, waking up and um, working and winning. I thought that was cool and everything, but mm -hmm. at the same time for her to have wrestled for the first time in months and beat someone like Zia Lee, who has been working even in dark matches, as well as matches on television, and built up her character, only to now be heel again. It's just, it was disappointing for me because Zia Lee really has been there, really has been working. And it, and I'm wondering, you know, what's next for her? Or if they would possibly have like a last, a last chance thing. I don't know, because they have done that in the past before. Um, and that's no, you know, discounting Lacey and her skills, but at the same time, Zaya is that girl who really has been working and she's been there. And I also mm -hmm. hate that they've sort of defaulted to turning Zaya Lee into a heel um, at this point because she was the protector and that actually did resonate with um, on screen with a lot of people. And so for them to sort of default and turn her into a heel, especially mm -hmm. as a woman of color you know, yeah. just bothers me a little bit because I'm just like, why do this? Like, and then it feels weird because you've turned her heel and made her fight um, a woman who also used to be a Marine and that's no shade mm -hmm. to them, but you're fighting a woman who used to be a Marine and you have this whole Americanized version of it and you're fighting mm -hmm. against this foreigner. And I thought that we were past that. This is 2022. Like, we're past the point of sort of labeling foreigners as the enemy and sort of perpetuating the idea that, you know, if you have an Americanized, you know, character, then you're the good guy. And maybe that was me thinking too much into it, but I felt like turning her heel was just kind of like a disservice um, 
to that and a disservice to the progress that's been made. So, yeah, it was disappointing on a lot of fronts. Yeah, I can I can definitely attest to that. Like, I don't I like I know they try to make people re- relatable in regards to real life and put implementing that into a lot of their characters and gimmicks. But as of today, not with a lot of things that has been going on in America, where it's happened to people of the minority, it's it's like ah, we're 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 tired of it. You know, it it comes to a point where we stop having these patron patronized gimmicks. Like we should be tired of that. We're tired of when Hulk Hogan was doing it. You know, John Cena. I know a lot of people like I'm I'm a huge John Cena fan. Um, and whatnot. So I may be a little biased a little bit. But what I can say is that, you know, a little bit, but I wouldn't say that he was full blown like patriot. Like he wasn't like he lived, breathed, sleep, all of this. You know what I'm saying? But with Lacey Evans and like Sergeant Slaughter and just like a lot of people, I know that these like these gimmicks and stuff like that. But we have to, we, I, I agree, we have to stop making it seem as if like this it is just kind of like blank racism on TV. Mm-hmm. Basically, that's really what you're trying to put out there, but you're trying to make it not seem that way. But it is; it, it really is. Um, but Lacey, she ended up qualifying um, for the match, and um, I mean, here we are. So she's a she's the first woman to qualify. Um, I don't necessarily know who will qualify next, um, but I'm I'm thoroughly excited to see who. Who's next? Um, We have six women left that could join Lacey Evans to be a part of the Women's Money in the Bank this year. Um, I know for a fact that we're we're not done. We're just getting started. I don't necessarily know who could be in there next, um, but I mean, I'm ready to see exactly what happens over the course of weeks as we build up to Money in the Bank that takes place July 2nd, my birthday month. So July is Santana Appreciation Month, so please do know that it's going to be you think I'm reckless now? It's about to be a little more up here uh, once we get started. I tell you that. <laughs> Santana birth season. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, let's yeah. jump into the comments a little bit. To, uh know a lot of people's views. I know we had a poll on if you guys were happy to see Lacey Evans be a part of the Women's Money in the Bank. Some people said yes. Some people said no. Um, a lot of mixed uh, feelings about that. Um, Bobby said that, yes, he was happy that Lacey wins her match. Uh, Jamie says no. Uh, Bobby said he was happy for everybody again. Uh, and Jamie said that she likes Zylie's character. They are dropping the ball. I definitely do feel like they are. Uh, Joseph said that I don't think – Joseph opposes. He said, I don't think they dropped the ball. I think Lacey is a bigger name for the pay-per-view. I can see Zaya getting in the match still if they have a last chance triple threat with the loser of SmackDown. Maybe. Maybe so. Uh, we definitely have no idea. We don't know. Um, I liked the Lacey Hill character more. Now I feel like they are shoving her in our faces. Mm. Hmm. I felt like that when they started going on these different vignettes, they kept flip-flopping her. She came out on SmackDown. She was a a baby face and, you know, and all this and that. And then she comes, she gets switched over to Raw. Then she's supposed to be a heel. She comes out. Then she comes right back down to SmackDown. I thought maybe she's going to show up in NXT. Uh, Maybe NXT UK. Maybe somewhere out there in the Indies. I don't know. Wherever it was, she's going to pop up eventually. Uh, Joseph said, with this second run of Lacey, Vince wants us to forget that at one point she was going to be Lacey Evans Flair, the stepmother of Charlotte. Yeah, oh, Lord. I think everybody wants to forget that disgusting feud. I, I definitely think I would like to forget that as well. I think I kind of brushed that to the back of my mind to ever thinking that this young woman would have a baby with someone like Rick Flair. Whew. All right. Don't laugh at me, TK. July is Santana Appreciation Month. I want everything to be about me. Everything to be about me. Um, so let's kind of let's continue on. I know we had another. Uh, we do have another poll that is currently up right now. Um, well, just ended, uh, which we're going to actually dive into. 
Uh, so let's jump into this right here. Uh, Ronda Rousey finally comes out um, and we get a promo from her talking about her, you know, her opponent that she will have to face at Money in the Bank, Natalia. Um, we know that Natalia and Ronda have had some history in regards to being friends, to Natty turning on her, to them having a match for the Raw Women's title. And now they're going to wrestle each other again for the SmackDown Women's Championship or SmackDown Champion, as Ronda would like to say, because also she doesn't like to include women inside of that conversation. Um, but... Here we are. Um, out comes Shotzi because Shotzi just seems to feel like she's being overlooked and mistreated because everybody is getting an opportunity to have a match with Ronda but her. Um, although we can just forget that she did face Ronda in the, you know, beat the clock, I quit challenge match. We're just going to forget that they even got in the ring with each other because um, this is fairly new. Everything resets, seems to reset after what? WrestleMania backlash, Helen in the Cell ish. So I mean, Shotzi, she's kind of been, she kind of been treated upon like she doesn't matter, as if like she it doesn't you know she doesn't have what it takes to be in the ring with Ronda Rousey. And I thoroughly think that Shotzi did a really good job. I mean, that submission hold that she did was kind of like a a very interesting like chicken wing uh, arm arm bar kind of like on the ground that she had with Ronda. It was it was. It was really good. I think a lot of people forget that Shotzi can actually wrestle, but she just yeah. hasn't really been given the opportunity to show that. I think Shotzi outside of WWE is great. Like you watch yourself on indies, Shotzi is a beast. In WWE, it seems like a lot of times they try to water down those indie wrestlers because those indie wrestlers can actually wrestle, you know. But I don't know, man. Like, what what do you think could be like really next for Shotzi though? Like, what what is next for Shotzi and and do you think that maybe somehow down the line, Shotzi will have an opportunity to, you know, maybe be a part of the Money in the Bank and maybe have a chance to go against Ronda Rousey for the championship uh, again, you know? I think she might. She has a great chance of qualifying to be to to be in the women's Money in the Bank match. Mm -hmm. She had, and she showed that she was definitely willing and able to fight against Ronda Rousey. Like even that one time where outside the ring she hit that tornado DDT, like that mm -hmm. was fire. Was. Like she she can like she really can go with the best of them, and she was showing that. Mm -hmm. Um, and she was showing that even her losing that six pack challenge to be, you know, number one contender, like, wasn't going to stop her either. So I'm pretty eager to see what's going to happen next, but I do see her qualifying for the women's money in the bank match. Like, and she would be one of one of my favorites to win. So shazi has got a good opportunity. She she good. I agree. Shazi is, like, I, I think she's amazing. I think she has a great character. She has a great look. She's actually starting to you know, grow in regards to like talking on the mic a, a lot more. Um, I think she's really developing. I just, I just want better for her. I really do. Um, but I mean, even after this match, of course, you know, Rhonda got the win, but it didn't last that long. She didn't really get a chance to, you know, do a victory lap or anything like that because Natty, of course, oh, Natty with the wonderful and amazing sharpshooter. I mean, nobody does a sharpshooter the way Natty does. The technique, the form is everything. And she had it cinched in on the baddest woman on the planet. But she doesn't look that bad now. She may be hurting bad. Um, but Natty had that, that synced in. And, I, and we did another poll to ask you guys um, in regards to do you think you know, like, does Natty have Ronda's number before Money in the Bank? And overall, every, a lot of you guys said yes, um, Natty does. Like, do you think that it could be a moment where we could see maybe Natty, I don't know if Natty be the one to take that title off Ronda, because it's been a minute since Natty has had a, you know, a title opportunity um, as far as a singles competitor um, and winning it, too. What do you what do you think? I think that Natty really does have a good chance because when it comes to experience, Natalia is that girl. Like what Ron is like. Yeah. 
when it comes to, ex- to wrestling experience, she is that girl. And Rhonda is going to have to really step her game up, you know, not even just submission wise, but just wrestling wise when it comes to Natty. So I really feel like Natty might have a good opportunity, you know, and a good chance to win the title because it has been a while since we've seen she- since we've seen her with a Natty with a singles title. Um, so I think she has a good chance. That was a snap suplex on the outside. One time for Natty, man. Like, Natty is the GOAT. She's a beast. She's a boat. She's everything. One time for her because without Natty, I mean, we'll never have wonderful videos like that. We really wouldn't. Natty, Natty is just, Natty is top tier. She really is. Nobody, nobody does it like Natty. Nobody does Natty it. Natty brands. Doesn't like Natty, like nobody does. Honestly, nobody does. And of course, like we said, Ronda Rousey will be defending her SmackDown Women's Championship against Natalia at Money in the Bank, July second, streaming on Peacock. Are you guys ready for this match? Are you ready for this buildup? I mean, they have like three weeks before we actually get to Money in the Bank, so they have an implement of time to really dive deep. And, you know, get get this situated and, and get this match together and get this feud going. So I'm I'm excited and ready to see what we're going to get uh, within these these women. Um, but just to let you guys know, that was the end of our Smackdown live post show. And we're about to dive into. AEW's rampage. So I'm gonna let Stephanie take over. If you want me to, you know, kind of run the pictures back here, or if you want to do it, uh, just let me know, um, and we can go from there. Well, Sand, I would really appreciate it if you could run the pictures because I'm not necessarily <laughs> sure how to. It's okay, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, because I, yeah, because you were you were doing it so well, and I just. <laughs> And I just need a little bit more practice before I go to pressing things and get button happy and start <laughs> messing things up while I'm talking. So okay. if you wouldn't mind doing it, I would really appreciate it. Of course, I, w- I will do it. Um, you go ahead. We can start with the opening match. Um, and I'll move it on over to the side uh, because, whew. There you go, Stephanie. Start. You can go ahead and start it off. <laughs> Yeah, so Rampage. This is Rampage, baby. That's the song they have to sing. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love theme songs. So the match, uh, Rampage started with, uh, a, they came in hot with Jake Hager versus Eddie Kingston. Of course, playing into a lot of the fighting that they did at um, Double or Nothing in that brutal and bloody match. Um and then, of course, Wednesday is sort of fed more into that because on Wednesday they participated in the Battle Royal and Jake Hager eliminated Eddie Kingston and Eddie was mad about it. So they continued to sort of fight each other and carried it into Friday night. And this match was a little bit clunky. Um, and it's like I try to give a lot of, you know, people a, like chances or whatever, but it felt like Eddie Kingston really was like a little bit out of it here with this match and jake hager really was kind of just going him and beating up on him and everything um it was a bit more of a brawl type of match but it was still very clunky in the sense it was just more so of a fight and less of a of a wrestling wrestling match but in the end eddie kingston i believe came out the winner so Mm -hmm. that's and then there were a couple of moments where during the match eddie kingston actually flipped him off um, because Eddie Kingston has now officially as is that person who really does not give a f. Um, he's hardcore. He's gonna tell you how he feels. So that's pretty much how that match mm-hmm. went. It was very brawltastic, and Eddie Kingston came out the victor. So, so San, how did you feel about this match? All I want to say is put me in a match with Eddie Kingston. <laughs> I I want to fight. <laughs> Put me in a match, Eddie Kingston. Everybody, anybody who knows me know I do not care for Eddie Kingston. By no means, they say I did not like that man. I think he has no charisma. I think he has nothing. He's great on the mic. That's cool, but he cannot wrestle to save his life. If I had to bet on 
Eddie Kingston to fight for my life, throw me off the damn cliff because he is, <laughs> he cannot wrestle to save his freaking life. But um, this match, I mean, of course, it seems as if like this feud is going to continue on within these group of guys. It seems as if like, you know, the match that took place at Double or Nothing was just not enough. Not enough. And they had to continue on. Obviously, transition over to last Wednesday or the Wednesday beforehand when Santana cuts, well, no, Ortiz cuts the middle of Je- Chris Jericho's hair. Like, what is wrong with you? Like, that man's beautiful hair. You want to cut it in the middle? Like, you're trying to give him a ball spot? You know, like, what are you doing? Stop it. Now I'm about to have a hair versus hair match. <sighs> no. But, I mean, with. Jake Hager and Eddie Kingston, I mean, it was a great way to open up the show and get them get them out the way, um, just so that I can go take a bathroom so that I don't have to look at Eddie Kingston. And here we are. <laughs> yeah, and let us know in the comments, you know, if you watch Rampage, let us know in the comments um, and tell us how you felt about this match, how you feel about Eddie Kingston. Do you think Eddie Kingston is a, pretty, is a solid wrestler, or do you feel like he has a lot to make up for um, in terms of his wrestling skills, though, he has a personality for it. So please let us know in the comments how you feel about Eddie Kingston as a wrestler and how you felt about this match in particular as an opener. So you got something already. Right. Yeah. And so moving on, <laughs> we have the debut of Satnam Singh and Jay Lethal as a tag team. Um, and they fought um, these two local talents. And here again, I believe this was just a moment. This match went by really fast, um, which is kind of what you can come to expect whenever there is someone um, who is a much of a larger build like Satnam Singh is. And mm-hmm. then you also have someone who is as experienced as Jay Lethal. Um, yeah. And they utilize both of those um, elements as a tag team to basically eviscerate their opponents. I don't want to necessarily call them jobbers, but that's technically what they were. Making talent their AEW fancy, huh? Talent enhancements, like AEW enhancements, is what they like to call them, to make it all fancy, yeah. you know, jobber. Yeah, but basically, jobbers. um, they got beat up when Satnam Singh was holding on to them by their shoulders, and Jay Lethal hit hit a move on it, and I can't remember what the name of the move was, but it was sick when I saw it, and I was very mm-hmm. impressed by it. And Satnam Singh hit the one, two, three, and that was it. This match was relatively short, but it was still the, it was still a good debut for Satnam Singh and Jay Le- and Jay Lethal as a tag team. Um, and then they also proceeded to beat up on the tag team that they were fighting against in the match and continue to stand tall, you know, because you know they're bullies. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty much the end of that match. So, Sam, how did you feel about it? I mean, how can I feel about a match that happened for like three seconds and I blinked and it was over? Like, yeah. they went out there and allowed those boys to get beat up by this big man. Like, I mean, they had they had no chance. Like, they had no chance to even go up there and do something. Like, they couldn't, they tried, they may have tried to do a swing, a kick, a punch, a grab, but when you have a stature of Sandals, like, this. There's no comparison. Like, there's, there's, there's not much you can do. <laughs> there's not much you can do. Like Jamie said, he's a big mother sucker. That's the- <laughs> Now, I did realize something interesting about Satnam saying that he has in common with somebody over on WWE by the name of Veer Mahan. Mm-hmm. And that's the fact that the, both of them used to play professional sports because Veer Mahan mm-hmm. used to play baseball and mm-hmm. Satnam Singh used to play basketball, I believe, for the NBA. Yeah. Um, and even one of his tattoos was a basketball going into a hoop. And you can tell because these men are really tall yeah. um, or at least very tall looking on television. I've, now, of course, I've never seen them face to face. But, mm-hmm. you know, it's cool. I just think it's really cool whenever professional athletes sort of make that transition into wrestling, you know, because they want to try something new and challenge themselves. So right. I thought that was re- that's a really interesting parallel there between those two. But we're not talking about WWE. We're talking about AEW. Wait. So moving on after this short match, we had a promo from Team Hookhausen um, <laughs> coming off of the heels of their um, victory. 
at the buy in um, for double or nothing. Um, the saying, the, mm -hmm. what is the name of the female correspondent? I honestly have no idea what her name is. I never, I they never know. They never really say her name. That's the thing. Like they never say what their woman name is. No, they um, do say her name because they said it tonight, and I just couldn't remember. I'm drawing a blank. Her name. I want to say, is it Dasha? No, it it's Dasha? not Dasha. It's another one. Um, is it Lexi Nair? Yes, it's Lexi Nair. That's her name. Okay. Um, Lexi Nair was outside um, in the parking lot and she was looking for um, Hookhausen to sort of make an appearance. And finally, um, Danhausen drove up in a cart and talked about, you know, how happy him and Hook were about their win and everything. Mm -hmm. And he said that they both went out and bought carts together. And then um, and then when Lexi asked where Hook was, he said, oh, you oh, you should probably come and see one of his one of his carts. So he came in right behind him and Hook had a little bit more of a bigger cart and his was just kind of um, camouflage <laughs> designed. And then he basically sort of nodded his head at Lexi and then he drove away. So that was really the most we heard from Hook Housing tonight. That's all I think we're going to get. I think he spoke for a little bit. He gave y'all what y'all was looking for and it was like, yeah. That's it. Um, but I mean, I'm fairly interested to see how long Hook and Dan Hounds are going to be working together. Um, it seems like Hook may, you know, start to become a little, little show a little personality with Dan Hounds. And I think, you know, Dan, he is out here putting curses on people. So, I mean, maybe he'll put a curse on Hook and maybe Hook will come out just like Dan Hounds. <laughs> I hope so. That would be cool. <laughs> Have you come out just like him and everything? Like, I think that'll be like extremely hilarious in so many different ways. I don't think they even know it. It really would. Yeah. I definitely would enjoy it. I really would. Yeah, well, that was really all we had from um, Team Hookhausen. But, you know, maybe maybe they'll get together and possibly challenge for those tag titles. Or they might just be chilling and just, you know, enjoy each other's company. Until, of course, they get on each other's nerves because this is wrestling. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Moving on to women's action. You have... Red Velvet, one of the baddies, um, being accompanied by Kiara Hogan, who had on this beautiful blue outfit um, that accentuated all of her hair and her curves. And the TBS champion, Jay Cargill, coming out with Stokely Carmichael, of course. Um, and Red Velvet was fighting in a match against Chris Statlander. Now, this match was really good. Um I was really hoping that Red Velvet was going to come out with a win here because it seems like any other time um, I sort of pop in and watch AEW from time to time, or at least on Wednesday nights, mm -hmm. it seems like the baddies are always losing. Mm -hmm. And un unless people in the comments want to correct me, of course, but it seems like the baddies are always losing. And I'm just like, this, this is a problem because if these baddies are coming together with their amazing you know bad b energy then they shouldn't be losing matches but you know it's i guess you know this is what we're doing um and that's not to shade chris statlander though because her performance in this match was really good and i love how she's utilizing more of her power um dynamic in her matches um and she's impressing me more and more um with each time i watch her wrestle so she is doing a phenomenal job, but I w and she did wind up winning the match, but mm -hmm. I was disappointed that Red Velvet lost. Um, but in the midst of that, um, Chris Statlander was trying to celebrate her victory um, after she hit her move on her on Red Velvet, and Kiera attacked her from behind, and then Jay took her heels off and then gave mm -hmm. a kick in the face, I believe, to um, Anna Jay, who came out to try to help. And then Athena came out there um, to try to even the odds or whatever. But then security and the referees, you know, kept them from kept her from going up there in the rain with them, which I thought was kind of odd because I'm just like, mm -hmm. why do that? You had the other girls, you know, show up and try to fight. So why why aren't you letting Athena show up and fight? Keep that same energy, guys. But 
you know, it's looking like Athena really is gunning for Jade and the TBS title. Um, mm -hmm. And that's pretty interesting considering she did just get there um, yeah. and she did just make her debut. But yeah, Chris Statlander came out with the win here. Um, they're just adding more fuel to the fire with Jade and Athena. So what did you think of this match, Sam? Um, well, I was trying to figure out why we were getting a, why we were getting it again because right. my thing is that we've already seen Chris Statlander and Red Velvet be in a match before. I thought maybe I know they're trying to include, you know, Chris Statlander and Anna J within this amongst this feud with Athena and Jay Cargill. Um, maybe eventually we could have a trios women's match, tag, you know, tag match with Red with the baddies. And, you know, Chris Satliner, Anna J and Athena, maybe possible come down the line and we'll have the, the trios match between these uh, six women. Um, but I thought maybe, you know, let's say Athena beat, you know, um, Kiera Hogan last week. Maybe it'll be like, well, you know what? I know you got one up on Kiera Hogan, but let's see how well you do against Red Velvet. Maybe I thought maybe they would do it that way. So that let's just say if Athena has beaten both, of the women in the baddies, then the last person she would have to beat is Jay Cargill. I thought right. maybe it was going to go down that way, but it seems as if like, no, that's not what they're going with. Um, it seems like they're going to try to continue to incorporate maybe all three of these women somehow, all six of these women somehow some way to continue this feud um, along the way. Um, I don't know what the end game is, um, but hopefully we, we may find out. But other than that, I think this match was great. Uh, what I will say about Red Velvet, I'm still not the biggest fan of her. But since she's been aligning herself with Kiara Hogan and Jade, we have seen a drastic change in her gear and in her hair and makeup. Yes. I mean, her hair looks great. Her gear tonight looked amazing. I got so tired of looking at the gear that she has in her um her render that I wanted to see more of red velvet. I wanted to really see her dive into this being red velvet with the hair, with the gear. And finally we starting to get that now. So I'm, I'm happy to see a drastic change in her gear and her, her look, her appearance at that. Finally, now that she has aligned herself with Kiara Hogan and Jade, you're going to be the baddies. You're going to look like baddies, you know? And now I see, and it seems as if like with them aligning someone like Jade, who was always together, like never out of place. There's nothing you can really say that's like, mm, this just looks like it's out of place. Like Jade always managed to, to know what looks good on her. And now that you have Kiara Hogan and Red Velvet with you, they're starting to kind of learn a little bit about what works for them and what doesn't. So I'm, I'm fairly, um, ecstatic with with the this new kind of look of red velvet even with chris statliner her whole dark look with the blue hair it looks really good too so big ups to both of these women and and the way in their drastic change in their appearance and characters and, and things of that nature so i'm i'm excited i want to see what's gonna happen next but then i want to see what's gonna happen with jade and athena and, and so on and so forth let's let's see where this goes yeah, I'm very interested in it as well. And also, you know, to piggyback on what you said, I did love the way the Red Velvet and Chris Statlander look. They're absolutely mm -hmm. gorgeous women. And it seems like with the new um, liberties that they're taking with their gear and mm -hmm. tapping into more of their personalities within, yeah. um, it it is showing, you know, more in their looks. And it's gorgeous. Absolutely mm -hmm. gorgeous. I love that. I love that. Um, let's go ahead and dive, I guess, to the last match of the night then. Whew. Yeah, we got the main event. Um, mm -hmm. You have the ROH and also AAA Tag Team Champions FTR and Trent Beretta of the Best Friends um, going up against Will Ospreay and Ozzy Open in the trios match. Now, what I will say about this match was as, as good as this match was, it was a learning experience for me because I'm not as familiar with Will Ospreay and Ozzy Open's action, mm -hmm. um, in-ring action, of course, um, because they're more so from New Japan, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So um, this was really my first time seeing Will Ospreay like, and Ozzy Open in the ring. And Will Ospreay is a very showy man. Um, he's very, very showy. Um, oh, yeah. With you're gonna, huh? learn, you're gonna learn it a lot. 
about Mr. Will, honestly. Yeah, he's very showy, very flashy um, with his wrestling style. Not to say that it isn't good. It's just very flashy and all over the place. Like, whoa. <laughs> it was kind of overwhelming. Like, he was just kind of bouncing around like a ball. Um, that's, but that's, even that's with... That's pretty much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but even with that, you know, Ozzy Open was still, you know, backing him up in a real, in a, in a pretty okay way. Mm -hmm. um, and FTR and Trimperetta were doing pretty good rising to the occasion of that. And in the end, Trimperetta wound up getting the cover for the win. So FTR and Trimperetta wound, uh, wound up winning the match. Um, there were parts of it I did not see because I had to step away for a little bit, but the parts mm -hmm. I did see, I did, you know, rather enjoy for the most part. But like I said, um, I'll have to look at more matches with um, Will Ospreay and Aussie Open and company. But yeah, it was pretty good. So um, how did you feel about it, Sam? Um, well, I'm pretty familiar with Will. Um, I've seen some of his matches. Um, in New Japan and outside of New Japan, like just kind of dabbling around on the indies and stuff like that and seeing some of his matchups. Um, so I'm very familiar with his in-ring ability. Um, like you said, it is very flashy. It's very flippy. It's very like big move, big spots. That's what Will is. You can tell by his gear, how he comes out. It's everything is like in your face. You're yes. right there. You're going to you're going to feel every move. And I think that when you have the technical side of, you know, FTR and Trent Beretta, it, it kind of matches up really well when you have someone like Will Ospreay and Ozzy Open who are a lot. They're technical, but they're also very, you know, high fly, high flyers, strikers and things of that nature. So I feel like this was a, I think this is a really, really great match. I know we kind of touched a little bit on, you know, Will making his AEW debut, coming over into AEW on Wednesday with Al. We um, did the AEW Dynamite post show and Al was not too fun of Will. You know, despite things that have been, that, that has happened with this man, um, a lot of conversations sparked. A lot of threats is going on. If you still don't know, there's still a lot of things that, you know, that he may have done, you know, inside and outside the ring as well. So, you know, if you want to stay over there, you want to learn more, you definitely go check out the thread that's been going on on Twitter. If you want to know a little bit more about Will um, and some of the negative things that he has done. Um, outside of that, I mean, this match was great to, to close out the show. I mean, you have six amazing talent um in this ring and it just kind of has you ready and geared up for forbidden door that's taking place on june the 26th it was finally we got to the point where we're starting to see a lot of the new japan wrestlers actually come over and, and do a little bit of an invasion over on AEW wrestlers so i thought that this was a great way to kind of start building some feuds we still don't know what matches are going to be taking place at the forbidden door but I mean, just it's just nice that the fact that we're starting to get something. You know, I know we had to get past double or nothing, but now it's time to really dive into um, what we're going to have for Forbidden Door. I mean, we only have, let's just say, three weeks before, nearly like two, three weeks before Forbidden Door takes place, right? So there's, there's pretty much a, a big start. So I'm, I'm excited to see uh, pretty much what they have in store for us when it comes to the Forbidden Door and so on and so forth. I, I hope that it's going to be big. I hope that it's going to be great. I hope I see some of my faves there. I hope there's some amazing matchups. I'm just ready to see what, what they're going to do. And I feel like we're starting to get, really get a start at what the Forbidden Door and AEW have in store for us, honestly. Yeah, that may, that is true. But I do have a little bit of a concern about Forbidden Door, though. Mm-hmm. Um, I think my biggest concern about Forbidden Door is just the fact that they don't have any women's women's matches scheduled yet. Well, so I know I know we've we, I know a lot of us we've pretty much been trying to figure out exactly what is going to take place with New Japan and AEW. With New Japan already, they don't they never have women's matches. That's why they have Stardom. Um, 
like on New Japan, you're not going to see any any women's matches. Like not at all. You, I don't even think you even see any women on New Japan. Period. It's just a straight males show only. Dojo, all like Japanese wrestlers, Asian wrestlers from all over, and some you know Europeans and and just all or just all over. It's a really just a male dominated show. New Japan has always been that. Stardom is definitely more so for the women. Um, so I mean, there's there's a lot of things we really could get with this with Ben Door. It just depends on what AEW and New Japan has in store for us. But as of right now, I don't really think there's gonna be any women on this match card, like at all whatsoever. I know that New Japan and Stardom um are going to be doing a collaboration on some things. Um Maybe we'll see some some women who are in AEW um, who have been in stardom come over and, you know, wrestle uh, and whatnot. But as of right now, there's there's really not a guarantee that women will be a part of this forbidden door. Like, there's no guarantee. It sucks, but New Japan is, is all about the men. Um, and, of course, AEW is, too. You can have to tell. Um but we really don't know. We don't. I mean, we just, if they do choose to add women to this match card, I think it'd be great. It'd be nice. Um, but I, I, I have no faith. I don't. Not at all. Like, I don't. It'd be nice, but I doubt that it happens, honestly. Okay. Well, with that <laughs> being said, that's the end of our rampage component of our um after show. So as always, you know, it's always great to sit here and talk about, you know, what's going on on our Friday nights um mm -hmm. with you guys in the comments. Thank you guys for participating um in the chat and letting us know what your opinions are and also participating on our polls. Mm -hmm. So please be on the lookout for those, you know, every time we post them on our Twitter page. Um um, so please check that out. Mm -hmm. So, um, is there anything else you have to say, Sam? Mm, not at all. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna play the video for y'all. I'm not. I'm not gonna do y'all like that. I'm, I'm gonna take a night off. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it unless somebody in the comments say the magic words, and I might. But I'm not gonna do it right now. I'm, I'm chilling. But I mean, it was great. Finally, have us back together. Um, although next week we won't be together, but I think maybe after the fact we will. I mean, Stephanie does her her big things. I do my stuff too. So, I mean, it's always nice to be able to have both of us here together to break down Rampage and SmackDown. Get through all the craziness that take place on both of these shows. Yeah, it always is great to talk about it, you know, with you, Sam. I do enjoy it. Um, and I hate it when we have to be pulled apart, but you know, that's just life and we have to grow. So yeah. <laughs> that's just life and we gotta grow. And 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 but it's okay though. A friendship is 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 real when you can come back together and act like nothing has passed. That's mm -hmm. what it that's what a real friendship is. So is. yes, so um thank you guys for joining us for um the smackdown and rampage after show always know that you can follow me your girl stephanie hardy on instagram and twitter at queen steph hardy and follow my show the hardy wrestling podcast everywhere you get your podcast and on instagram at hardy wrestling podcast and on twitter at hardy wrestle pod mm -hmm. and of course you know for me you know, it's Google me, Drian Santana, D-R-I-U-N-E, spelled right there on the screen below me. You have to spell it right because otherwise you will not find me. Um, make sure you guys come back and tune in for tomorrow. Um, Saturday, we do have a All Things Indie, Indie wrap-up uh, show with Mika, Katrina, and Emily. They're going to talk about all things that's done with indies um, that's been going on for the week. Um, on Sunday, uh, we will have the Battle Slam post show. Nikki is going to be attending uh, the Battle Slam, um, I think it's uh, Fight for Atlanta um, in Atlanta. And she's definitely going to do some live coverage, get some nice photos for you guys. I've been kind of teaching her a little bit some stuff. So hopefully, um, she's learned in the midst of me teaching her from virtual wise. Um, and then we going to do the post show to kind of talk about the matches and everything like that. Um, and then on, of course, 
Uh, Monday, we're going to be doing a, we're going to resume with Turnbuckle Glam on Monday and then a raw post show. And then on Tuesdays, uh, we have Miz and Mrs. that me and Nikki are on. Um, and on Wednesdays, we have AW Dynamite with Mika and Al. On Thursday, Thursday is a packed day for us. So first, we're going to have uh, Stephanie and Katrina do the NXT 2.0 at NXT UK post show. So make sure you guys tune in for that. And then following later on within the night, we have the return of Creep Squad. So make sure you guys tune in for that. They will have a special guest probably. So you definitely want to tune in. And of course, the Impact post show right before me and Nikki head to Slammiversary that Sunday. And then of course on Friday, me and Stephanie, we're gonna, well, me and Stephanie is going to be in New York. So sad. I'm going to be here by myself uh, running chicken over SmackDown and Red Page alone, but it's definitely would definitely be here somehow, some way. I'm going to I'm gonna be really nice to Romy in her absence. Um, and then, of course, we're back again on Saturday. Uh, next Saturday will be the Indies um, app post show and stuff like that. Um, and then, of course, on Sunday, we will have some anniversary. Um, hope you guys come in and tune in for that. We will have the post show. Um, and so on and so forth. So that's pretty much the going into the next week, you guys. So thank you guys once again for joining us. We had a, a stack. We had a lot of people come in. Uh, make sure you guys tune into Women's Wrestling Talk. Uh, follow the Twitch. Subscribe. Follow us on social media. Uh, make sure you check out the website because it's Pride Month. We have a lot of articles that we're putting out for Pride Month. So make sure you guys tune in for that. Repost and share. And um, once again, you are watching Women's Wrestling Talk the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. And for that, we are going to get loud. Let's get loud. Bye, y'all. Yes. <laughs> women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet.